Daniel Dumoulin, better known as MF Doom, is one of hip hop's most beloved rappers. Known as hip hop's super villain, his unique rhyme patterns and flows got him the respect of basically every rapper that you can think of. He said T Boogie in them. Dog, he called you T Boogie. Despite his lack of mainstream success, MF Doom is widely considered to be one of the greatest of all time, and to some people, he is the greatest of all time. And one of the ways I can help you better understand why MF Doom is one of the greatest artists of all time is by looking at his story. Because like every great supervillain, MF Doom has a tragic backstory that will help you understand who he is and why he is the way that he is. And for that story to make sense, we need to go back to the beginning. My name is Zev Love X. Zev for short. So um, we're from K the rap group KMD. MF Doom's career began as part of rap group KMD. The group was comprised of MF Doom, who at the time went by Sud Lovettes, Onyx the Birthstone Kid, and DJ Sub Brock, who was the brother of MF Doom. The group would initially get a lot of attention from their guest feature on third bases, The Gas Face. Looking back at this song, it's clear that people saw the potential in KMD and Sev Lovett specifically because he gets a lot of love in this track. A special appearance by KMD's Sev Love when Sev Love Etz takes over the song, he really gets the star treatment. It was this song that would get the attention of Electra Records, who would sign the group to a deal. And it was under that record label that the group would release their first album, Mr. Hood. And listening to this album, I realized a couple of things. One is that Onyx kind of sounds like ECE. And the other one is that MF Doom legitimately sounds like Slick Rick. I had to check to make sure that it wasn't Slick Rick rapping. Many thanks for He's your help. But I guess it makes sense since both rappers were born in the UK and then moved over to New York. So maybe that's like a unique accent type of thing. In terms of production, there's two notable things. One is that the type of sound that the album has resembles De La Soul and uh, A Tribe Called Quest. But also a lot of the production here does carry some elements that we would see later on be expanded on when it comes to MF Doom. But this was only supposed to be the beginning for KMD. They get to working on a follow-up album called Black Bastards. And just by the title and looking at the album coverage, you can probably assume that this was going to be a darker album, which it was. Which makes sense because the landscape of hip hop had changed by the mid 90s as the sound of rap started to go away from the upbeat sound that it used to be. However, what this album really represents is the beginning of MF Doom's tragic tale. As by the time this album was set to be released, the group had disbanded, the label had dropped them, and worst of all, DJ Sub Rock had passed away. And with the disillusionment of everything that had happened, Doom would step away from the mic for a few years. And by the time he came back, he really did come back with a vengeance. In 1999, Daniel Dumoulin would come back to hip hop under a new name. Gone were the days of Sev Lovettes, and in came the era of MF Doom. Operation Doomsday. Based on the character Dr. Doom from Marvel, MF Doom was a complete reinvention of who Daniel Dumoulin was. Operation Doomsday was really nothing like what we had heard before. The album is built around the idea of getting to meet who MF Doom is. And I think the album does a great job in setting the tone. Now, to some of you, the sound of this album may not sound villainish enough. It's a very laid back, shelled out type of beat. But I think this is on purpose. I truly believe that with this album, MF Doom is trying to replicate an era of villainy, and the specific era that I think he's trying to replicate is the Silver Age of Comics. This era starts taking place in the mid 50s and ends in 1970. This was the same time place where Doctor Doom was introduced, and on top of that, the art for the album cover is kind of similar. In terms of personal highlights from the album, personally, I think Rhymes Like Dimes is a pretty cool song. Hey, yo, yo, y'all can't stand right here. Uh, it, 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 it's especially a fun song. It was one of the first Doom tracks that I ever heard, and I loved it from first listening. However, my personal favorite is Doomsday. 
the beat is smooth and the sample fits so well with MF Doom's flow on this song. And the lyrical content for the song bases around who MF Doom is. This was the first MF Doom song that I heard and as an introduction to MF Doom, I can't think of a better song. The difference between Sad Lovettes and MF Doom went beyond music though. Especially when we talk about the difference in image between the two. The most notable difference between the two has to be the mask. What I did was I said, all right, look, I'm going to come with the angle of it don't matter what I look like, you know, it don't matter what the artist look like, it's more what the artist sound like. So the mask really represents the, the whole, like, to rebel against the trying to sell the product as a human being, you know what I mean? MF Doom's mask is probably the most iconic thing about him. And for good reason, because before MF Doom, there really wasn't any rapper with a mask on. At least not that I can think of. MF Doom's mask added to the mystique that MF Doom had. And I'd argue that this whole re-imaging of MF Doom versus Sev Love Vets would mean nothing if it wasn't for the mask. And to further explain what I mean by that, I think we need to look at the importance of masks to throughout society. Obviously masks have played an important part of society in the last few years, but of course masks have been important for way longer than that. In the United States, masks are more commonly associated with superheroes. Whether you're a casual Marvel fan or a die-hard comic book fan, the importance of the mask to a superhero is something that everybody knows about. The mask is part of what makes characters like Batman and Spider-Man as iconic as they are. Even if we are to step aside from the superhero slash comic book side of it all, masks can still be seen playing a role in society around the world. For example, there's the art of Lucha Libre. This is a style of wrestling that focuses more heavy on high flying moves, and the mask is so important for Mexican luchadors that they can make or break your career. Probably the most famous luchador of today's day and age is Rey Mysterio. You probably know about him for one reason or another, and like most luchadors, he also wears a mask. And look, here's a picture of Doom wearing his mask. And I bring up Rey Mysterio to bring up the difference between someone who wears a mask and someone who doesn't. This Rey Mysterio? Cool as fuck. Now this Rey Mysterio, I don't even know who that is. And that's how important a mask can be. But what Doom's mask most reminds me of goes way back to ancient Greece. When I was in high school, we had to read a lot of plays from ancient Greece. The purpose of it was to use critical thinking to find a deeper message for all of these plays. And in order to further understand the meaning of a play, we had to look deeper into what the culture was like at the time and i remember that of everything that we had to learn about the thing that i found most interesting about ancient greece was their use of masks they served a couple of purposes in terms of helping the audience from far away recognize what was going on it would also be a way for actors to be able to play more than one role and nobody noticed but the type of mask that these actors would use would vary depending on the type of play ancient greek theater basically divided into two genres of plays which was comedy and tragedy whereas in comedy masks were more exaggerated and something that was used basically for laughs the look of the mask in a tragic play was supposed to be more lifelike and the most important role was to transfer a regular person into something bigger than life the examples that I brought up weren't just random examples that I thought of, as I believe that the Doom mask carries elements from all of these places in society and make the MF Doom character work. Specifically as it relates to a mask transforming a person into something mythical, I think the best example of how MF Doom's mask was able to make MF Doom iconic comes in the form of the album cover for Mad Villainy. I bought it on vinyl. I didn't even have a record player. I bought it on vinyl just to stare at the album. And I stared at it and I just kept going, I understand. When I think of Doom, I think of the album cover for Mad Villainy. It's all about the metal face, just black and white. You really can't see his face, so it's like the little details that catch your eye. The top right corner has an orange square, and although the square isn't necessarily necessary, I like it, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And how this album was able to take Doom into icon status without a big hit was mostly because of the bars. Made by the duo of MF Doom and producer Madlib, Mad Villainy was released in 2004 and if you were looking for a darker sound coming from MF Doom, this is the album to listen to. The rest is empty with no brain, but the clever nerd, the best MC with no chain. The production on this album is handled by Madlib 
and his sound goes so well with MF Doom that honestly this pairing was inevitable. A large part of what makes this album so incredible is due to the production by the way. As it relates to samples and avoiding staleness, this album is flawless and honestly in terms of production, I find it very hard for me to critique it in any way. I remember a big reason for why I checked out this album was because one of the bars I found very intriguing and I wanted to see if there was more bars like it. The bar that I'm thinking about is on Great Day. Looky here is just the way the cookie tier prepared to get hurt and mango like everything from the reference to the rhyme scheme to the flow just caught my ear and made me want to check it out. In terms of standouts from the album, there's a lot to pick from honestly. Uh, you'll hear this often when talking about this album. Every song on this album sounds like it's related to the Nets, so it's very likely that the best listening experience that you'll get from these songs will come to you as a result of listening to the album. But in terms of standout songs, Accordion is a fan favorite and it's also one of my favorites. Living off borrowed time, the clock ticks faster. That'll be Living off borrowed time, the clock ticks faster is a crazy bar and I love it. Sounds like some cool philosopher type shit, not gonna lie. The track Meat Grinder has a crazy intro. <laughs> And MF Doom has a great flow on this track. He's not flowing in the traditional way, but in the flow that he feels his best. Tripping off the beat, kind of dripping off the meat grinder. It's like watching drunk mixed martial arts, but in terms of rapping. And my personal favorite on the album, all caps. Spot hot tracks like spot a pair fat ass. Now, the coolest thing about this track for me is that it was on the boondocks and the fight scene that goes along with this song. <laughs> It's one of the coolest fights I've ever seen. Oprah's in danger. Not while well, I'm here. I have to get into that studio, even if it means going through you. Man, you come straight out of a comic strip. And I will say, it is thanks in parts to MF Doom. The way that it's incorporated into the scene is beautiful. But yeah, I think overall this is MF Doom's best album. But I do think there's one more worth mentioning. Yo. MF Doom. This album is by far MF Doom's most fun album. As implied by the name, mm, food does focus a lot on food, and every track on the album has a reference to food as well. And there's not a lot to say about this album, but it has a place in my heart because of how fun it is. Like, I remember reading the title the first time I heard this album and just laughing because I found it funny. And looking back, there's a lot of things to love about this album. I definitely enjoy the fact that it's not as challenging to listen to as other Doom albums. And the guitar on Rap Snitches, man. It has my heart. Rap Snitches, telling all their business, sit in the court and be their own star with This is the main standout I want to bring up from the album. It's my favorite song on this album specifically. And I mean, everybody loves it. Even this guy. It's the old MF Doom line, snitches telling all their business, sitting in court and being their own star witness. <laughs> it just puts you in a good mood, man. It's just a great song to listen to. Definitely a summer song, not gonna lie. Whole Cakes is another track that I really like. I got this girl and she wants me to duka. I told her I'll come scoop her around 80 seconds. If I could beatbox, I would make the beat right now. Honestly, that was close enough. In my opinion, I did good. The DB Cooper bar, by the way. MF Doom, he's like DB Cooper. Fire. And another track that stands out to me has to be One Beer. There's only one beer left. Rappers screaming all in our ears like we're dead. Just a cool beat and a cool set of bars. If, if I were you, I'd check it out. In terms of influence, man, MF Doom is one of a kind. It's actually easier if I name the rappers that haven't spoken about MF Doom than the ones who have. People from Drake to Most Def all recognize the impact that he has had on hip hop. In terms of inspiring people, I think he's kind of like Jay Dilla. If you're a producer, you know who Jay Dilla is, and if you're a rapper, you know who MF Doom is. Really, his impact on music is incredible. You can find them making collaborations with Nike, or Nike, however you want to say. Uh, you can find them on the GTA soundtracks. And that's because people appreciated Doom for being who he was, a person that was all about being real. And despite all of the things that I've covered, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can discover from MF Doom as he has basically his own universe, especially as it relates to his alter egos and like lost projects here and there, there's a lot to check out from him. And in what seems like the perfect super villain ending for MF Doom, Daniel Dumoulin would pass away on October 31st of 2020.
Although it is unfortunate, I do find it a little bit cool that he passed away on Halloween. And although Daniel Dumoulin might not be with us anymore, MF Doom will be with us forever. And with that being said, I'm happy I finally got to do the MF Doom video. It's been haunting me for like a year and a half at this point. Um, but yeah, I got it done. Uh, with that being said, shout out to y'all for showing love in the last video. And uh, with that being said, uh, shout out to MF Doom and uh, shout out to Jay Dilla.